What's up everybody, it's Parker with BI Elite. We just finished our June 2021 Power BI contest. We received a ton of awesome Power BI report submissions. And in this video, we're gonna go through the top three winning reports, and you can use these demos as inspiration for your next Power BI report build. These top three reports are amazing in their own way. I thoroughly enjoyed going through everyone's report submissions. It was so difficult to select the top three reports, so we also have some honorable mentions down on the bottom of this page as well. So if you want to go through these Power BI reports yourself, make sure you go to this link. If you go to train training.bile.com slash contest, there will be a link directly to this specific June 2021 contest page where you'll see the Power BI reports embedded in the page. As a reminder, we run these Power BI contests about every two months. If you do want to compete, it is open and free to everyone. And if your report is selected as one of the top three reports, you will receive a free month of training from BI Elite Training. You'll also get a demo of your report on a video like this one and have your report embedded in the contest page for all of eternity. So with that, let's go ahead and get into the first winning report. This one comes from Sean Chandler. Let's put this report in full screen. And right off the bat, you're presented with a very nice homepage. This homepage does two things really well. Firstly, it defines what this report is about and what data set it's pulling from, and that's done via this nice little text box here on the left side. And then you'll notice these wonderful navigation options. These have a really cool hover effect. So if you wanna check out the first option, cryptocurrency overview, it gives you a little text information about that. And you hover over it and you can click on it and take you to that next page. That's such a unique use of cards and their hover states. Um, so I really like the way that Sean has done this. And I think I might incorporate this into my reports as well. So let's go to the first tab, this cryptocurrency overview. And this has just a lot of great information about this crypto price data. There are three main visualizations on the page. This nice combo chart with lines showing the price and the uh, bars showing the volume. And then a couple of tables here on the right side that we probably won't focus on. The couple of items that I love on this tab is the dynamic metric selection that Sean added. This is very expansive. Like you can take a look at all of the different metrics that you can choose from. We can, for example, select the 30 day low and visualize that. We can even select a different cryptocurrency here. So if we wanna take a look at Aave specifically, uh, we can do so. I really like the fact that Sean kind of called out the fact that there is a report page tooltip when you hover over the visual. I don't normally do that, but it's a really good design technique to let the user know that they should hover over it to see more information. Actually, you can see that the report page tooltip actually has more information than this entire report page. So it is worth it for the user to go in and dive in a little bit. I also noticed that the report page tooltip is actually driven by our metric selection. So we selected 30 day low, and you can see that the report page tooltip is showing 30 day low across all these different visualizations. So that is really, really nice. There's a lot of great stuff in this report page tooltip. You can see that really nice kind of matrix timeline of hours of the day, and you can see that conditional formatting based on the larger increase or decrease. That's really, really cool stuff. The last thing that I want to mention on this tab that I really, really liked is this pop-out slicer panel. It's just done really, really well. It's, um, it's really skinny and it doesn't take up too much space and it's really clean to pop out. So you can open it up, make your selections and click this apply filters and hide button. But yeah, it's just a really nice design that doesn't really take up too much space and you can open it up when needed. And this apply filters and hide button is just really polished and just has a really nice feel to it. So that's kind of the main page. If we go to the next tab, this tab allows you to compare two different cryptocurrencies. For example, if I select Ethereum in the first one and select uh, let's do Bitcoin just to compare the two biggest ones. We can make that direct comparison between those two individual cryptos and it carries through our dynamic metric selection from the previous page. This is really, really well done. If I were to critique one thing or, or really just recommend uh, something, I have a video on how to directly compare two categories. And by that, I mean, if you have a slicer selection in the first one of Ethereum, you can make it to where Ethereum disappears from your second slicer selection. So you make sure that you are never able to select the same one in each comparison slicer. That's just a small thing, but I enjoy doing that because it adds a little bit to these comparison tabs. Make sure to check out that video if interested. Uh, that's just a, a really small nitpicky thing. And then finally, uh, just on our last tab, this is a really cool what if scenario that allows us to look back and say, if I would have uh, purchased a certain coin, let's say Adam, and I purchased it on a certain date, and I purchased a certain volume, how much money could I have expected to make or lose? So you have a really nice narrative here that's gonna lay it all out in words for you. Um, a really easy to understand little window down here that's telling you, hey, this is how much money you would have made if you would have sold properly. 
But my favorite part of this entire tab is the limited data labels. You can see that Sean uh, elected to only show the first data label and the second data label, and it's all color coded very nicely so that you know, you know, that was the first one. This is the most recent one. So if you bought at four dollars and fifty one cents and sold at twelve dollars and seventy three cents, you can expect that really large profit. So that's a really cool touch um, to be able to do the first and last data labels. So really that's the theme for this report, just these really nice polished touches that make this report really fun to navigate through. And that's pretty much the entire report. I love going through every individual tab and looking for all the little Easter eggs that Sean added. I definitely recommend checking out this report yourself. And if you want Sean's contact info, you can find his LinkedIn profile below this little description. Great job, Sean. Moving on to winning report number two. This one comes from Raphael Albuquerque. So I'm gonna go ahead and full screen this one as well. I love this one as well. And just as a reminder, these reports aren't in any specific order. Um, I think all three of these reports are just amazing in their own way. So this second report has such an interesting feel to it. It has this kind of typewriter font, it kind of gives it kind of a newspaper feel. It's got the dynamic element in the uh, little ticker visual, and that's gonna move until you hover over it. Um, there's a lot to talk about on this page, uh, but the things that really stood out to me, besides the font and the style, which are perfect, are this uh, section on the left side, which is uh, basically just an informative piece about each individual crypto. So if I were to select Bitcoin or Bitcoin Cash, it's gonna give me a little bit of information about that specific crypto. And this is interesting because this information was not included in the data set. So Raphael uh, actually went out and grabbed this data set, I'm gonna guess from CoinGecko or, or maybe Lunar Crush, um, and put this new data into this Power BI file, so kind of went the extra mile there. But this is all information that you would wanna know uh, if you were investing in crypto, or it's information that you would expect if you were to go to one of the crypto information websites like CoinMarketCap or such. It gives you uh, the daily volume, the market cap, the circulating supply, um, the total supply, so total number of coins, um, the circulating supply being the total number of coins in circulation so that you're able to buy and sell. And he even has this nice little text write-up to give you specifics about this data. Uh, it's just so well done and kind of grabs your attention at first. But let's move on to the visual piece on this tab. There are a lot of pieces here that I love as well. Um, so the first thing, uh, this line chart, it's, it's so well done. So it's a line chart with multiple series. Uh, so it has the close price, which is probably the most important piece of information. Uh, that's kind of the solid line. But the dashed lines are all of the moving averages. So we have the 10 day, 20 day, 50 day, 100 and 200 day moving averages. So those are all dashed lines. And these are even um, dynamics so that you don't have to show all of them. For example, as an investor, if you only care about the 10 and 20 day moving averages, you can actually look at just those two once that finishes loading. I'm actually going to select the 20 day and the 100 day moving average. And let's say I only want to look at Bitcoin data for the last couple years, just to get a, a smaller window here. So we can see our crossover for our moving averages. Um, so where the 20 is above the 100, you can see it's trending well uh, more recently. And then the 100 day uh, crosses over the 20 day in more recent days because cryptos have, have fallen um, pretty recently. Raphael also added a really nice option to switch between log scale and linear scale. So if we want to look at log scale, we'll just have a different view that puts it in perspective. Um, or we can stick with linear, it's probably easier to understand. You can also select the USD trading pair, or you can compare it directly to another cryptocurrency. For example, if I wanted to compare Bitcoin versus Ethereum, we can do so. And see how they compare to each other. So see how Bitcoin has risen or fallen um, directly compared to Ethereum. Raphael also added this really nice uh, conditionally formatted bar chart. So this is representing the volume of sales for, for Bitcoin for that period. You can expect to see charts that look just like this on you know some of your uh, crypto investment websites. Uh, if you're trading on Coinbase, you, you can expect to see the volume represented like this as well. So this looks exactly like you would expect in, in other places. But probably my favorite part here is the time brush slicer he added as well we can make just a, a small selection on this date range. So if I wanna look at just a small period of data, we can select it via the time brush slicer and filter everything else on the page. And this all looks like a single visual, but it's actually three visuals um, just placed really nicely and they maintain their layer order to just create one nice cohesive view here. It's just so well done and I can't really say enough about it. So that's pretty much all of my thoughts for this tab. Um, let's go quickly to the other tab 
Uh, so it'll be a little bit quicker. This is just a nice tabular view of all of the different cryptocurrencies, showing their price, showing their changes over the last hour, 24 hours, et cetera. Um, the really cool thing about this tab are the links that uh, Rafael has added directly into the report. So you can open up this cryptocurrency on CoinGecko, or you can open it up on Lunar Crush as well by clicking on any of these links. Uh, just really nice design decisions. It all looks great and has great functionality. And you can go pretty in depth with this first tab. So that's, that's pretty much it for me uh, for this report. It's just amazing. I definitely recommend checking it out. Uh, if you want to check out Rafael's LinkedIn page, there's a link directly in the report. Or as always, you can find his LinkedIn info below the little description after the report. So awesome job, Rafael. And moving on to our final report. This one comes from Kyle DiBernardi. He's actually won a uh, contest in the very beginning, I think. Uh, one of his report submissions got one of the top spots in maybe our Google Analytics competition. Um, he's a really great report developer. Uh, he has a lot of humor to these reports as well. As you can see, this is the first page of the report, and it's basically just a big Twitter feed of things you can find referring to cryptocurrency with this kind of red-eye meme that I totally missed, but but it, it's, it's hilarious nonetheless. This page can also be used uh, as a navigation, so you can click on any of these and, and take you to the specific page. Uh, we're just gonna flip through some of the more interesting tabs. Um, so right off the bat, it kind of presents you with a, a really fun take on this whole crypto data report. Let's go ahead and go uh, through these tabs. I'm not gonna spend too much time here. Uh, this first tab is just kind of an informative piece showing a comparison between the different cryptocurrencies within this data set. What I want to focus on is this tab right here that I spent a ton of time on. He titled it Hindsight is 2020. You're able to select a specific cryptocurrency and say, if I would have made this much investment on this date and sell it on this date, how much money would you have made? It's a nice what if scenario here. Uh, specifically, I'm going to look at something I've invested in the past. And again, this is not investment advice, but I had invested in Stellar or XLM, um, a much smaller investment than the default 20,000. So if I were to buy, uh, let's say on, let's change this to about 2019, so Christmas of 2019, and I were to sell it on April 3rd, 2021, uh, I would have bought at a price of four and a half cents. I would have sold it for 45 cents and made a $9,000 profit. So all that information is great, but the really cool piece on this page is this conditional formatting of the bar chart. So this bar chart giving you the entire uh, price history of our selected coin, the Stellar Lumens. So it's really clearly showing the price action over time, but it dynamically highlights your selected date selection. So you can fully see if you made a good or poor decision uh, for selling. So if I were to extend this out to the most recent day of data, we'd see that we're on the decline here. So it would have been much better if we would have sold just a few days prior and sold closer to its peak up here. That's just such an interesting touch and, and really paints the picture very, very clearly. Um, last thing I'm probably gonna go through on this report, uh, besides this wonderful candlestick chart, uh, this candlestick custom visual. I really like this visual in this report. It just clearly shows the opening and closing prices uh, for our selected date periods. Uh, I want to spend a little bit of time on this wonderful tab that Kyle put together specifically devoted to Dogecoin. This page gives you all the information that you need to know about Dogecoin, such as when it was established, its all-time high, its current price, how old it is. It has a wonderful background image of a Doge. And basically you can use this to take your money to the moon. And again, this is not investment advice, um, but what a wonderful representation of probably the most important coin in crypto these days. Um, so yeah, it's just, just a really fun report using the Comic Sans font. This is probably one of the most fun reports I've ever had the pleasure of digging into. So great job, Kyle. Again, LinkedIn contact information down below. And before we end this video, uh, we do have three honorable mentions. These reports were wonderful. Um, they easily could have won a top spot, but there was just so much competition in this contest. These reports were created by Marek Rogulski, Martin Jewell Nielsen, and Federico Pastor. Uh, really awesome reports. They definitely deserve some attention. Uh, so go ahead and check those out as well. You can click on any one of the pictures and open up those public reports. So those are 
all of the reports that we're gonna go through in today's video. I hope this helped you get some inspiration for your next Power BI report build. I was really impressed by some of the designs and, and features that these report builders were able to incorporate into their reports in a relatively short time. So a couple of final things. The data set used in these reports is available on the training.bielite.com website. Make sure to check out the data sets tab. And if you are interested in competing in our next Power BI competition, make sure you check out the contest page. We run a competition about every two months. So the next competition will most likely occur the first Monday of August. So if you are interested, make sure you frequent that contest page to find out the theme of the next competition. And with that, congratulations to all the winners. Thank you everybody for competing in this competition and I'll see you in the next video.